Hey there, it's August 4th. This is the weekly news recap here on Ball Prairie Real Estate, where I go through what I thought were the most interesting news-related topics in the Canadian real estate world and give my thoughts and opinions on it. My name is Matthew Pfeiffer, real estate agent in Regina, Saskatchewan, and that's my trusted assistant, Matilda. We're gonna be talking about what I think is probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard a real estate agent doing in a showing before. We're gonna be going through as well, a city in Canada that's seeing an absolute explosion in online search activity. As well, we'll wrap things up talking about which cities in Canada where someone or a household making the median household income is able to actually afford to buy a house in that city. But as always, we're gonna start off with another one of my terrible bad dad jokes. The other day, my manager asked me, why do I only get sick on weekdays and have to take work off? And I said, must be because of my weekend immune system. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. Let's get into this week's news. I want to start off talking about pre-approvals and more specifically what you can do to improve your pre-approval because of course one of the first steps in buying a house is getting yourself pre-approved. Now what can you do to increase that pre-approval meaning you can spend more or just make yourself a more qualified buyer? The most obvious is working on your credit score. If you don't have a 620 or higher, pretty much every one of the major A lenders, so that's your banks, your credit unions, and all your mono line lenders won't consider you. There's always exceptions, but that's a good rule of thumb. If you have below 650, you're not gonna get the best rates. Above 650, and again, some lenders are a little bit different, but basically above 650, you're gonna get the best rates from all the best A lenders. Next, let's talk about debt, because when you are taking a mortgage on, you're taking on debt. And what the lender wants to see is your ability to repay that debt. And if you're paying a whole bunch in car loans and student loan payments, well, you can't afford to take more of a payment on. So kind of a quick rule of thumb is that for every $100 in debt you have to pay per month, so it's a line of credit or a car payment, etc. that is gonna reduce how much you can spend by about $20,000. So if you can pay off outstanding loans and reduce those car payments or eliminate them completely, that's going to allow you to have a larger pre-approval. Speaking of those lines of credit, one thing you wanna make sure you actually don't do is cancel credit cards or lines of credit because you wanna have what's basically called the rule of two, that is, two types of credit for two years. So a line of credit and a credit card, and you've had them for at least two years because the lender is going to look at how much credit are you utilizing. So even if you have a very large line of credit you can access, but you haven't used any of it, that's a good thing. And you have the history showing that you can borrow money and pay it back. That's what lenders are looking for. And two things that you really shouldn't do is go out and buy a new car and take on those payments. That of course is gonna reduce that credit worthiness and you may actually end up wrecking your approval once you've actually got your mortgage approved and don't go and change jobs because when you go change jobs the lender is going to look at that and say maybe you don't have a stable source of income and if you are on a probationary period in that new job it's very difficult for how lenders to have faith that you're going to continue that employment and they usually won't give you a mortgage the first news article i'm going to go through is a Kamloops realtor fined twenty thousand dollars for drinking milk during a showing. Now this is something that's in the news right now, but it actually happened a couple of years ago and I remember when it happened and just sitting there thinking, oh my, what are you doing? Whenever I go into a house and I try to tell all of my buyers this is assume you are being recorded. Everything you do in there, the sellers are gonna find out about. So just don't do something stupid. In this case here, the real estate agent was thirsty, looking for a drink, and, and wasn't able to find, I guess, a bottle of water in the fridge. So instead, grabbed the carton of milk and drank directly from it. Uh, like, what are you doing? You could have just gone to the tap, stuck your head under it, and I'm sure most people wouldn't have cared. What I find is really crazy is that this real estate agent was fined $20,000 Plus they had to pay the legal fees to go through this whole process of about $2,200. Now, again, what this agent did was stupid. They shouldn't have done it. It's inappropriate. You can list a whole litany of things that it was. But a $20,000 fine to me just seems so excessive when I have seen real estate agents doing far worse things and things that I would say are awfully darn close to fraud. I'm not gonna say fraud because in this case, Many of these agents weren't convicted of these things, but they got awfully close to that and they weren't given fines as significant as this. And of course, this agent had to go through all of the public humiliation of being exposed for this stupidity and it was stupid. 
but really to me, a $20,000 fine just seems in excess of really what actually happened. But I can guarantee you, he's not gonna drink any more milk out of somebody's fridge and it's showing again. Now, according to Royal LePage, Edmonton, Alberta is the most searched city on their website. In 2019, Edmonton saw 0.5% of all searches for people looking for homes to buy in Edmonton. Now it's at 2%, making Edmonton the most searched city on Royal LePage's website. And this really doesn't surprise me because I see it in my market region, a lot of people looking from specifically Vancouver and Toronto at the affordability problems that they have there and saying, well, a lot of these other cities in Canada are far more affordable, whether they're looking to buy investment properties or outright moving to these cities and making their new home, I'm seeing it in my market. And I think Edmonton makes a lot of sense because we saw over the last two years what's happened in Calgary. Calgary has absolutely exploded. There's a lot of foreign buyer money flowing into Calgary now. And by foreign buyers, I'm not talking outside of Canada. I'm talking specifically from Toronto and Vancouver. A lot of people looking for investment properties to see how much single apartments have gone up for sale and how much prices have increased for apartments as well as single family homes. And I think that now people are looking at Calgary and saying, okay, we saw what happened there. Well, Edmonton must be the next boomtown because Calgary is absolutely a boomtown right now. And I'm gonna be talking about Edmonton in just a minute because it is one of the most affordable markets in Canada. And with an affordability crisis in many big cities in Canada, people are looking at places like Calgary, Edmonton, and even Regina, Saskatoon, and other prairie cities to be more affordable. Next, we have Vancouver looking to discourage single family home construction. Right now, this is just a discussion and a proposal, not actual policy. But what they're looking to do in Vancouver is essentially make it harder to build single family homes. Specifically, if you're looking at a lot, you want to tear down an old house and build a new one, of course, the city of Vancouver has abolished single family zoning and what they want to see is larger duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes built on there instead of single family homes and to discourage people from building single family homes, they're actually going to reduce the buildable area on a lot. Typically, there's only a certain percentage of the lot that you can build on, so Vancouver is looking to reduce that for single family homes, but increase it if you're building a duplex, triplex, fourplex, or if you're doing a laneway suite. Now, I've talked about the fact in Canada we have a significant shortage of houses and we've done a lot of demand suppressing policies without addressing supply and we keep trying to bang on this suppressed demand, suppressed demand type policies and then wonder why it's not working. Making it more difficult to build single family homes is not going to make single family homes more affordable. And I think if you poll most people and ask them in a perfect world, what type of property would they like to buy? I bet you most of them would say a single family home. So if we go do this and make it more difficult to get single family homes built or rebuilt, what's gonna to happen to the price of single family homes? It's going to go up and all that's gonna happen is the only people who can afford single family homes are the very wealthy ones and not everybody else. This is a new report out from Zucasa talking about which cities in Canada can a household making the median income afford to buy a house in that city. This report from Zucasa is looking at what is the median household income and then if you went and got qualified for a mortgage, what is the maximum mortgage or maximum purchase price that you could have based on that median income and compare it to average house prices to decide which cities in Canada are affordable and which ones are not. I'm gonna be doing a larger deep dive video like this. I know I've been saying for a while, I'm still working on it. I'm hoping to have it out in the next couple of weeks here, but let's go through what Zucasa has done here. So let's talk about Vancouver, the most expensive housing market in Canada. Median household income is $90,000. That qualifies somebody to spend about $413,000. Of course, house prices in Vancouver, $1.2 million. How about Toronto? Median household income, $85,000. So that means you're qualified to spend a little under $400,000. And average house price in Toronto, $1.1 million. The only cities on this list that have a household median income that can actually afford to buy a house in those cities are Edmonton, Regina, Winnipeg, Quebec City, Saskatoon, and St. John, they put PEI in there as a province, but let's just talk about the cities here. Now, I once had a commenter say, well, in Regina and Saskatoon and other prairie cities, there's no high paying jobs, and that's why house prices are low in those cities. Well, when you look at median household income, 
all of these cities that I just talked about, except for Winnipeg and St. John, have a higher median household income than both Vancouver and Toronto. So I'd say that blows that comment out of the water. Yes, there are affordable houses in places where median incomes are actually higher than Toronto and Vancouver. And of course, there's far more cities in Canada that you can buy a house than what's just on this list, but it's a really good one to look at. I'll put the article and the link to it like I do with all of these articles in the description below so you can check it out. In this case, they ranked the cities from highest median income to lowest. And actually, Ottawa had the highest median income at about $106,000. So check out the article and see how your city stacks up against the rest. Now, if you're looking to buy a house in Regina, I'd love to be able to help you out. But if you're not looking to buy in Regina, that's okay. I can still probably help you out because if you look in the description of this video, there's gonna be a link to my calendar where you can book me in for a buyer's consultation. And what I will do on that call is learn about what you're looking for in a house and what type of an agent are you looking for. I'm gonna handpick the best agent for you in that market, I'll get you guys connected, and you go from there and buy that perfect house. Of course, if you think about buying a house, you probably have a whole bunch of questions. Well, right here is my first time home buyers playlist that's probably gonna answer all those questions and even more. So check out those videos if you wanna learn more. If you love this video, please give this video a like, hit the subscribe button if you love keeping up to date on the Canadian real estate market, leave some comments below because I love chatting with you guys in the comments section. And as always, thanks very much for watching.